Congratulations on reaching episode 5. This is going to be a very meaty series, and with any tutorial series, the number of viewers who stick around drops off dramatically after the first few episodes. So if you made it this far, you're already part of a special few, so well done on the patience and determination. Let's keep it up. Today we're going to learn how to script a unit, specifically our enemy units, to pick an action and target on their turn. It's actually a lot simpler to do this than it is for the player to pick actions, which I can tell is going to be a hard topic to break up into episodes, but for now let's get our enemies going, and even if you get no no further in the series than this. By the end of this video, you'll at least know how to make an auto battler if that's something you're interested in. Okay, so first of all, we're going to head over to our game data script and give our attack action to our enemies so that they can access it. Technically, they could always just access the global action library to perform a specific action, but it's good to know what action an enemy has available to it. This allows for situations like the player taking control of an enemy, certain status effects preventing certain actions, and so on. So we'll add global.actionlibrary.attack to our slime's previously empty actions array. Then we'll start adding code to the AI script function. You can define one of these for each enemy type so they can all have different behaviors, strategies, etc. All that's required is that we return an array containing an action and a target. Let's have our slime target a random party member with a physical attack. We'll define action as simply being the first action of our array, which we know is the attack action. In theory, it would be better to first make sure we have the attack action and find the exact slot that it's in, but we'll keep things simple for now. For targeting, we want a single random living player character, so we need to first filter our list of allies and remove any dead characters. So we'll make a new var called possible targets and use the brand new array filter function with O battle party units, and then we define a custom filter function, taking in each unit and array index in turn. What array filter does is return a new array by going through each entry and running a custom function on each. If we want to include an entry, then we return true. If not, we return false. So very simply, will return unit.hp greater than zero. So if the unit has any HP, we'll return true and include the unit in our possible targets list. Then we just need to pick a target at random from our list. Our target will equal possible targets, i random, array length, possible targets, minus one. This just gives us a random entry from anywhere in our possible targets array. You might be wondering what happens if there are no possible targets. Well, the game will crash with an error, but we don't have to worry about this in the long term because if there's ever no living player characters or enemies, then our victory check state will have handled that before we get to running this script. While we're here, we can copy this basic behavior and attack action to our bat enemy for use later. Okay, so now we've defined an AI script, how do we call it? Let's go to battle state select action in obattles create event. We're going to replace this line where we currently just have each unit attack itself, and then check to see if the current unit is player controlled. A simple way is to just ask if the unit is an obattle unit PC or not. We'll leave this section blank for now and add an else block for our enemy units. We can then get our action and target by calling unit.ai script. Remember, that returns an array with our action at index 0 and targets at index 1. We'll check to make sure it doesn't somehow now equal minus 1. This gives us a way to later add a fail state into our AI scripts if we want to. If it doesn't, then we can assume we have the array we need and call begin action with the unit ID and our selected action and target. Now we can't run this just yet, as our allies will get us stuck in this state as they don't begin any actions. We could put the punch yourself in the face call back in, but let's at least for now have them do a similar script to the enemies and just auto attack. I'm going to copy and paste the AI script we wrote directly into this code block, swapping out the action list reference for a direct reference to the attack action, because we haven't actually defined an action list for our allies yet. Swap O battle party units for O battle enemy units, then we don't need to return anything, so we swap this directly for a begin action call using this action and target. This really is just a placeholder so we can see our two sides actually fighting each other and not themselves. Actually having the player pick actions and targets themselves is one of the more complex parts of this system as you'll see later. You could also, of course, set up AI scripts for player characters in your game data script and call them in the exact same way as we've done for our enemies. You could use this to create an auto battler or NPC. PC allies. Speaking of auto battlers, that's kind of what we have now. If we run the game and get into a fight, we'll see our characters actually fight one another properly. As I said before, we'll run into a crash once all of one side dies. I'll show you what that looks like. But remember, it's not a problem as our victory check state will deal with that for us later. But that'll have to wait for the next episode. So thank you all for watching. Thank you to my patrons for supporting the series and I'll catch you all next time.